today I'm in the studio and I've set up a still life um, with some flowers and, and a lovely coffee pot and some cups and fruit and I'm I just want to show you how I use this uh, viewfinder there's the viewfinder and I'm going to look through the, the hole the window and as you can see it, it just isolates the part of the setup that I want to put into the painting and I'll be using the viewfinder in the early stages of this painting to help me get the drawing right and to make sure everything's in the right place. That's the viewfinder. I'm using acrylic for the painting today and I'm going to start um, using a brush. Uh, later on I'm going to switch to a palette knife but I'm starting with this brush which is just an ordinary decorator's brush. It's a two inch one so a nice broad brush and I've got the viewfinder and I'm just going to have a quick look through to remind me of the composition that I want because in the first instance what I'm going to do is just get down some colour onto the board um, and this is going to be an underpainting so I'm going to start with some really bold colour today and the painting and the, the colour I put down now um, will be underneath the final colour, most of it. So I can go in with a very um, vibrant colour um, to give a nice um, surface over which to work. So I keep checking. As I'm doing that, I'm thinking about the objects and where I want them to be within the, the square format. And I can just really quite roughly get them drawn in at this stage and the, the thing to remember is that it's not set in stone it's not um, supposed to be a very accurate um, <clears throat> drawing it's just uh, to get started and to block it all in um, as I go through the painting I can keep um, refining the shapes and that's the beauty of working in this way uh, with acrylic is that you can um, paint over and you can adjust um, what the marks you've made before. So really the background drapes are actually soft green but I want to get a lovely vibrant, so I love this um, cadmium orange and going in with it. and we've got orange in the flowers and that will come in later in the flowers um, so it's rather fun to start with something um, underneath which is going to give an added vibrancy to the painting so I'm going to bring it bring another colour in now. I'm just going to gradually sort of add colours to this and I've got I'm mixing up some cerulean blue with some lemon yellow to get that sort of turquoisey colour. I'm actually going to bring it into the the jug at this point. It's um, it's actually a very dark almost black vase at the back here but I'm going to bring that in and bring some of that down here as well. <coughs> And obviously we've got lots of flowers, so quite a lot of greenery. Just sort of gradually building up, blocking in the colours. I'm not looking for detail at all. I'm trying to keep my brush clean. I use a lot of um, kitchen roll and water. It's really just to clean the brush. I'm not really diluting the paint too much at this stage. Um, I don't I like thick using thick paint 
rather than um, getting it too um, too fluid. Although at this stage, it's it doesn't matter too much if it if it drips or you know it, it's fine because it is just the underpainting. I've got some lovely flowers, some lovely sort of soft orange flowers, which obviously I've got a lot of orange in, so um, I'm going to get some darks in now, um, especially where this, this jug is, because as you can see, as I'm thing colours work in relation to each other, so this lovely dark area here um, is going to really make the coffee pot stand out. I borrowed this coffee, coffee pot from a friend and I love this sort of tall kind of 1970s style with uh, some stylized flowers on which will go in later and so as I work I can gradually get that shape to come out. We've got some um, oranges, well there's an orange and a lemon actually so That's all going to, all the colours are going to work really well together. And I can, I'm going to bring in a darker colour into this background area. Um, later on, it will probably be a lot lighter. But at this stage, I think it's quite nice to have something. Um, contrasting with what's going to go on the board later on. So I'm kind of starting to get a little idea of where everything's coming within the, the painting. Um, there's a little uh, milk jug over here. I'm just going to hint at that as well, behind the orange. And when I do the setup, I try and place things some in front and some behind, so you get a kind of depth within the um, within the composition. So it's not all on one plane. It's it's all um, creating that feeling of of depth. This little cup over here. I'm just going to wash that brush out. It's an incredibly muddy <laughs> colour, and we don't want that. So I'm washing that out. And um, yeah, this cup needs to be over slightly. So it doesn't matter if, if I don't get it right first time because that's kind of part of the technique is that you get these sort of um, lovely marks underneath. And then I can um, gradually work out how it's all going to fit. What I can do, I can go in with a little brush. This is a, an old um, brush, there's no hairs on it, it's just a stick. And I can I can go in, the paint's still wet, it's not drying too quickly at the moment. And I can draw into this wet paint. And that's just a way of helping to define the shapes start to sort of pick out the objects like that. It's also creating a bit of texture on the board. I, the board is MDF and what I did was I um, primed it with some gesso. Gesso is an artist's primer for canvas and um, board. And I used a very rough old brush um, to do that. So I've already got some um, texture on the board. So it's a nice random sort of texture. So at the moment I'm concentrating on these areas. And what I need to do is to check the drawing. Is to think about the shapes between the objects. So 
So I'm still blocking in the underpainting um, and I'm going to I'm going to bring a colour in. I just love having a bit of red underneath um, the, you know, the final painting. Some of this colour will show through at the end, um, but just little bits of it. And it's quite, it's, it's lovely to just get that um, vibrancy under there. So I'm not, I don't want to get fussy with the object at the moment. Um, just, just want to get really a, a kind of approximation of where everything needs to be. And then I can gradually build it up, work on it in layers, and refine everything. We've got some dahlias, I think they are. They might not be dahlias, I'm not really um, that well informed about the different flowers, but there, there's certainly some dahlias in this um, collection of flowers. Um, I'm just really looking for basic shapes. I'm not, not really looking too much at individual flowers, but more blocks of colour at this very early stage. And um, later on I can start to bring in a little bit of detail, but the whole painting um, I want it to be very free. I don't want it to be, um, you know, a detailed representation of what's there. Um, I'm looking for more of an impression of the overall thing. I'm going to. There's a white cloth on the table, but I, it's. I always like to um, get a colour down underneath, and later on I can think about the making it look like a white cloth. So it's going to be very handy to have this colour um, on, on the board over to work later on. Bring a bit of it up there as well. I'm not afraid to go in quite dark at this stage. I'm not looking at the light particularly. Um, <clears throat> it's just, um, in fact, I, it's quite handy to have a dark colour over which to put a lighter colour later on. And it, it seems to really help the, the light colours um, stand out. So I'm not concerned about that at this stage. It is the underpainting. So while that's still very wet. This um, cup, I, I was very lucky to have a friend who lent me the coffee pot and the, the cups and um, the cups got a, almost like a black um, saucer. So that I think is going to really help to balance this with this very dark vase at the back here and, and make this stand out. I'm going back now to my stick really. I can't really call it a brush anymore because there's no hairs on it. So again, as you can see, I'm constantly going in and redrawing um, these objects. And what's happening on the board is that there is now quite a build up of paint and texture so although I still think of this as the underpainting it's actually already got quite a few layers of paint um, and some of it's quite thick and by scratching in like this I'm creating more texture on the surface and you can see I'm looking at how the objects all fit together, how they relate to each other <coughs> and we've got this jug 
there's the bottom of the vase and then there's the handle of the jug which later on it's actually quite a light colour it will go in later on when I work over the top and it's very useful this little tool for scratching in sort of areas like this where there's a lot of stalks and small flowers I can really start to build up a kind of textural um, surface it's lovely you see and just gradually just quite roughly just quickly as well getting some marks flower shapes um, There's a light colour flower here, I'm just going to get the overall shape of that. And while the paint's lit, just build up this texture. And it doesn't really even matter if the flowers aren't quite in the right place. Or I can either move it later on, or what I'm after is something a bit more expressive and impressionistic rather than an actual... Um, precise portrayal of what's there because for me that's more important and if I was to spend too much time working on the um, drawing and being very precise I would lose that kind of energetic lively feel in the painting. So I've got a dark green on the brush now and I'm going to bring some darks in up here there's some <coughs> leaves shapes so I'm going to get some shapes in um, just bring them in as you can see the the flowers are sort of going off the edge of the, the board which I rather like that sort of informal composition rather than having everything enclosed I like to have things going off the edge a bit and I, I think that kind of leaves a little bit to the imagination so I rather like that and um, I'm, I'm just sort of really finishing off this um, first stage of the painting there's a little milk jug there which really will come out more later on. Um, almost at the point um, where I will switch from my brush to the um, palette knife. But I just want to just get rid of a little bit more of the white that's left. If there's the odd flat that's not too much of a worry but um, I like it to sort of more or less be covered really all that white board and um, you know it just gives for me it just gives an, a, a lovely um, textural colourful ground over which to work. There's actually not, there's a, another half a lemon there so <laughs> let's just sort of indicate that before it gets forgotten. And um, so I've got quite a lot of scratching um, on the board, lots of texture and as you can well you can see there's a lot of colour um, and I think it makes for a fun start to a painting and I'm now going to let this dry off a bit before I work with the palette knife um, for the next stage of the painting. Now, I've 
really got the underpainting done. So there's lots of colour, there's lots of texture. I've more or less got the position of the objects that I want in the composition. I'm now going to switch to my to a palette knife. And when you're working with a palette knife, you, you need thick paint, so a heavy bodied acrylic uh, will do. You can add a bit of impasto medium to the to the paint, which helps to extend it a bit and keeps the consistency of the paint. So um, it's more or less dry what I've already done but I can now work over the top with the knife and um, let's see how it goes. Now I'm mixing up um, a nice soft green which um, I want to use for the background. Um, obviously the colour I've got at the moment is not the colour, the final colour, it's just the underpainting. So I can now go in and start to overlay this softer colour. And you can see that I'm not attempting to cover all the underpainting. Um, <clears throat> It actually gives, I think, a nice layered effect by just skimming over and leaving some of that showing through. And where I've got the texture on the board, especially from all that scratching in, um, the paint picks up the texture and creates a lovely um, surface and layered effect. I can also use a bit of tissue, which if I want to blend it a little bit, I can soften it a little bit, I can go in with that, push it around the edges a little bit perhaps, and, um, but I can still have a, a little bit of that colour underneath coming through. And as I work, I'm working around this uh, coffee pot. And what's happening is I'm looking at the shape here between um, the spout and the main body of the pot and all these other negative shapes, that's the shapes between. And by doing that I am actually still drawing out the shape of the coffee pot. So. I can use the negative shape to get the actual shapes of the objects and you'll, you'll see that happening over the rest of the painting with all the other objects. So I've already changed that side of the board dramatically. So even at this stage I can lay even more colour over the top. I can light it up and mix in and bring in a slightly different shade. The drape that I've used has, has got a pattern on it but I'm, I'm not going to put that pattern in. I just wanted a sort of soft area um, behind the flowers and the jug. So I'm not going to put a pattern in. I think it would be too distracting. Um, while I've got this colour, I'm, I'm, mix, I'm making it slightly darker and I'm bringing in some over this side. Um, because what I like to do is keep moving around the painting. I don't want to get fussy in one area. It can quite easily happen. You can get bogged down and overwork an area. So there's actually two drapes. One is lighter than the other. This one is a bit dark on this side. Um, 
but there's quite a lot of light coming in from the window. So nice to get some light in and you'll see that the first stage which was very dark and sort of quite bright vibrant colour now it's gonna be some softer colour and light areas coming into the the painting. Now I'm going to carry on with working on um, the sort of in-between shapes, if you like. Um, I've got a, the, the table top has got a green, like a turquoise green um, drape, and it's also got a white cloth. At, at the moment, I'm, I'm looking at this turquoise because what I can do is I can now come down and look at these shapes in between these objects. Drawing, if you like. Still drawing the coffee pot, although I'm not actually touching the coffee pot itself. It's literally the shapes between the objects. There's one of the oranges. The orange, I should say. And this is going to be a white cloth, but it's handy to have some shadow and other colours coming in because you'll find that it's not really white. There's lots of reflected colour and there's lots of um, shadow on it. So I'm going to bring this down here as well. Working around this saucer shape here and up here. sitting on an oval table so I've got slightly curved edge which is rather nice rather than having a straight edge. Um, so as I'm doing that I want to kind of bring it across here as well just to link that up a little bit of um, A bit of blue there, should be green. Turquoise, just sort of bring that in. Yeah. So everything's starting to come a little bit more defined, still very free, and that's the effect that I want. I'm not aiming to get it. Um, too precise, I want that freedom and energy in it. So, um, you know, you won't see a lot of detail. I'm now going to just mix up very light colour. It's not white, it's got other colours. I didn't clean my palette knife too much. I just mixed in some white because what I want is what I call a dirty white, just to start bringing in some of the light of this cloth here which has got a, a lacy edge to it. So I'm going to try and hint at that as well as I go. So again, looking at these shapes, the shape between, I can start to get the objects to stand out. This yeah, lemon should be further over so I can change that and the cloth sort of comes across here. Just a little hint at this <coughs> slightly lacy edge to the cloth. Now everything I'm working on I can go back to. Um, I don't like to spend too long on one area. I'd rather build the whole thing up gradually. Um, so that's why some areas are, you know, I've, I've 
I won't sort of get an orange to look perfect and then move on to the next thing. I want to gradually build it up and I will go back to this area uh, later on. I want to um, do a little bit now to this, to the flowers and this jug um, before I start to work on these objects because of the coffee pot the handle comes in front of the vase um, and it will be helpful to have a bit more of that in. The, the, um, the vase is very dark, it's almost black but it's quite shiny so there's quite a lot of colour in it and I, I just really want to soften it a little bit to be honest, I've put quite a dark colour on so I'm just softening it a little without losing all the the dark completely I can just bring <coughs> a little bit of colour over the top um, I don't want the jug or keep calling the jug but the, the vase here I don't want it to stand out too much eventually I want that to lay back so just being quite free with that and hopefully when I start to get the other things in that will sit back nicely there's a lot of um, different flowers here and I can start to have a look at those and really make decisions. It's it, a lot of um, what I'm doing is making decisions about what to put in and what to leave out. And there's certain flowers that I definitely want in. There's a, two flowers here, quite big ones. So the the palette knife's great for this type of thing because you can use the shape of the knife to help describe those petal shapes. Not counting every petal, but just sort of getting an impression of that flower. And because I've got the dark here, it's really going to stand out. It's quite nice because the shape of this is really going to echo on the, on the jug when I get that designing and there's another one up here as well. Using quite thick paint. Um, you know it's obviously um, you can get through a lot of paint but I think it's worth it to create this lovely kind of lush effect. So starting to get these flowers in, it's really going to bring a bit of life to the painting. <clears throat> this area between the flowers is actually very dark and I'm mixing up a, a lovely dark colour. I mix a bit of Payne's Grey with some magenta and it's, all, it's a lovely kind of very rich colour. It's almost black but it isn't black. Just getting smaller have it nice for this bit and just to sort of bring that dark and I can work between the flowers a little bit between the petals as well just to sort of and that will help to give them a bit more depth too it's handy having the dark colours in at the first stage um, and it's, it's lovely going over with the lighter colours and there's some, um, let's have a look, there's some other flowers, let's get some more of the flowers in. Um, so I don't want to fiddle so I'm, I want to get this in before I do any more to that area there. They're, they're nice flowers. I actually, um, I can't say borrowed because I can't give them back, but my neighbour gave me these flowers this morning. Um, 
but they're just from their garden and they're not perfect but I like that I don't want I, I you know if I have to buy flowers from the forest sometimes but um, they're always a little bit too perfect for me I prefer this sort of more casual relaxed feel and um, And there's also some quite vibrant yellow flowers which I'm going to bring in here. Little yellow marigold type flowers. And a little touch of yellow behind there. So you can't see every flower it is just really a massive colour and then it's just really about picking out the odd shapes that just helps to describe those um, flowers now there's this one um, it's actually two, there's one behind it, so it makes it very confusing, but I'm going to just go in with a bit of a lighter sort of background colour and just work into that a little bit, like that. And then with this colour, which is slightly lighter green, because it is quite light behind it, I'm just going to add a bit more background colour, but lighten it up slightly lift that area there's a, another flower here which is a, a white almost white flower with a touch of red in the middle so I'm not using pure white but a much lighter colour just and that's really nice because that's going to add more contrast as well. Yeah. Very thick paint. So the thickness of the paint helps to describe the shape as well. Try not to fiddle but just keeping it very simple. And I put in the, it's like a dark, I don't know what the flower's called unfortunately, but by putting the dark red centre in, that's really going to pick that out. And also just describing this, the stalks, and I can bring in, I've got this dark on the knife now, I can bring in some dark stalks which I always think really really lift the painting at this stage and I can bring some up here um, I've already got the, the texture underneath which is creating a, a kind of a stalk effect but this is just highlighting it those dots. So that really makes that a lovely interesting part of the painting. Something like that. These have got quite darker, much darker centres to them. So while I've got a dark colour, I'm going to go in and just bring that in. It's a bit green so Something like that, and that one, and that one there. So, they're starting to sh take shape. I can go back to this area, and I, I, I will do it in a, in a little while, but I'm going to now come down here. I don't want to fiddle, so it, it gives me time as well to think about um, what I do need to do to that area while I'm working on, on this. So I'm going to start with the jug. Um, I 
and the jug is actually it's a white jug but it's a very soft white it's not a, like a very shiny in your face sort of white so um <coughs> using a, a very soft color for that <coughs> and i'm just going to start to without I don't want to lose all the lovely texture and um, interest that I've got already here. So I'm actually using the knife very, very um, lightly over, dragging it over to pick up the texture because there's a lot of shadow this side and that colour underneath is actually going to create that shadow feel and there's the handle, not the handle, the spout of the jug. No, not a jug, coffee pot. <laughs> Keep calling it a jug. Anyway, that's the, the spout. So you can see it is starting to appear more. I've got to get the handle in as well, I mustn't forget that. So there it goes, slightly angular sort of shape, something like that. And here. So there's a lot of Now where I've kind of gone a bit skew if there, that's fine because what I can do is go in and just adjust that, that's not the end of the world. And also up here. Actually if it was dry it'd be easy to just go over it. So I can go back to that later if I want to do a bit more to it.